All right, let's talk about L-I-D-A-R, LIDAR. It's a game changer, guys. This house, it's a simple house in Florida. What I'm trying to do here is I picked three examples just to give us an idea of how accurate LIDAR is. Now, in this particular house, it's one that people actually live in. You know, there's three children that live in this house. And, you know, when we go and do appraisals, a lot of times people have things really cleaned up for us. But a lot of times, you know, people live in these houses. Kids make a mess. You know, everybody is not that, you know, concerned with keeping things perfect. LIDAR works best when the closets are clean, you know, there's nothing in the way. But, you know, this is a simple square footage house, so it shouldn't have been anything really hard to get the GLA accurate on here. And now these are pictures of the actual LiDAR scan that I took. And, you know, you can see, I mean, it's a simple design, but what you notice and the point of this is that you can see that people live in this house, you know. There are clothes, you know, there's pillows on the couch. They actually have a snake over there. I stayed away from that. But however, you know, there's things on the floor. There's, you know, a lot of people have more furniture than other people. Sometimes things get in the way. Baby strollers, you know tables there's just things that get in the way and when you're doing a scan it's very important for accuracy to make sure there's things not in the path of your scan and as you can see by these scans you know there are a lot of things in the way now technically that should not impact the scan and change you know what the square footage is and that's why we're doing this test to see if it makes any difference if you got like a new construction versus a house with children that somebody actually lives in so when we come down to the GLA in this first example you know there was an appraisal done on this so we're going to see in the tax code it's listed with 2,639 square feet. Now, in the appraisal sketch, he came up with 2,821 square feet, which I actually remeasured just to be sure. And this was taken just from his report and came up with the same thing. Now, this is the LIDAR scan. What did we get? 2,539 square feet. Guys, that's a pretty big difference on there. So, appraisal, 2821, Cuba Casa, 2539, and the tax records, 2639. Now, just between the appraisal and Cuba Casa, guys, that is 282 square feet. Does that change the value? You better believe it does, guys. You know, a difference of 20 to 30 and square feet, that's one thing. But 282 square feet, and remember, this was a simple design, you know. There was nothing complicated about this other than the fact that people actually lived in this house. So, our first example comes up with 282 square foot difference between the appraisal and Cuba Casa. Let's look at a second example. Okay, guys, let's look at example number two. This house is a one-and-a-half-story design. You know, the front is pretty basic. The back has, you know, a little uh, bay shape on it, but it's nothing really hard to measure. You got an open foyer in the living room, and but nothing really complicated. The scan that we got back was 3,672 square feet. Now, this sketch is from the appraisal that was posted in MLS. First floor is pretty basic, no problems. Now, you can see the second floor is a little more complicated, and you actually have, like, two different living spaces. But MLS says 4,239 square feet. You know, it's a pretty good-sized house, but... 
4,239 with that design shouldn't be that bad. So the appraisal says 4,239, Cuba Casa 3,672, and even the tax records had 4,180. But the difference between the appraisal and the Cuba Casa scan is 567 square feet. Guys, that is a lot of difference. Does that change the home's value? You better believe it does. I mean, even, you know, 150, 200 square feet, these are things that change property values, and there just can't be that much difference. This was a clean house, you know, nothing to get in the way of the scan. It's something I was pretty confident might turn in good, you know, or turn out good, but 567 square feet difference. Example number two didn't fare too well. Okay, this is one of the simplest ones. It's a town home. I mean, it's a few, you know, four measurements pretty much, and you're done on this one. Cuba Casa actually gave us two measurements on this one, which was a little confusing because, as you can see, there's not many pulls here. But this second one, this is my, my sketch where I confirmed what we had from an appraisal, an old appraisal. And, you know, there's quite a bit of difference. But, I mean, if you put the two side by side, you know, there's just not much complicated here. And this ought to be one of the ones where, you know, there's, you know, three or four square feet difference at best. The appraisal had 2,055. The first Cuba Casa had 1983. And the second one had 1921. Not sure of the difference. Tax records had 1910, so we got 72 to 134 square feet, and that's too much on something this simple. This one should have been a no-brainer, but for example number three, it just did not do the job that it should have done. Okay, now the point of looking at these Cuba Casa examples is not to tell you how bad Cuba Casa is. It, actually, they were about the middle of the road in everything we've tried. And the point of this is to make sure that you test whatever program you're going to use. Before you start putting it in files to give to customers, make sure you do your own test and learn, you know, when... It's so important, you know, to open the windows and the blinds and move things out of the closets. You know, each program has their own idiosyncrasies, and you need to learn what you have to do to make that program work the best. You know, call the company, talk to the people that do it, and they all have some great videos on how to use their products. So make sure you, you know, just take a little time to really learn your product. And of course, now, the eye guide works really, really good. But, you know, you got to buy a $3,500 plus dollar camera you know, to get that level of quality. And obviously, if you go into the one that's $53,000, you know, if you're doing professional commercial buildings or whatever, you know, maybe it's worth that expense and you're an architect or whatever, you know, they each have their own uh, field or marketing, if you will. But to make sure you know the product that you use and some of them, or they're kind of like people in measuring. They get better with time. The more you use it, the better you learn how they work. You learn to work with it. Spend a little time. Get to know the product that you're going to be scanning square footage with.